real life example that we choose is a basketball spot. Let's see the demonstration. There are two main concepts in basketball which are projectile motion and law of motion. The projectile motion is the key of shooting in basketball spot. The five keys are launch speed, launch angle, launch height, air resistant, and launch distance. First, launch speed. It is important to shoot the ball in a small time frame as possible to result in a greater release speed since velocity is proportional to time. Release speed is proportional to the force applied to the ball. The more force applied, the further the ball will travel. Launch angle is simply the angle at which one launches the basketball towards the basket. 45 degree angle is the halfway in between two extreme degree, which are having the arm straight out and parallel to the floor is a zero degree angle and having the arm straight out pointing to the ceiling is a 90 degree angle. The distance from the loop and the release height of the chute determines the ideal launch angle for a slow moving ball to enter the hoop. Third, launch height. It is determined by the height of the player shooting. By increasing the height of the player, it can reduce the distance to the ball, hence rises the entry angle of the ball projectile act, allowing more space in the hoop. Fourth, air resistance or aerodynamic drag describes the force which acts against an object traveling through the air. The greater the surface area, the greater the air resistance made by the ball. Drag formula can be used to calculate air resistance. R equal to 1 over 2 d rho a v to the power of 2. R is resistance force rho air density a cross sectional area to the projectile v projectile's velocity and d drag coefficients. Fifth, launch distance. The distance between the shooter and the hoop is important to consider in order to achieve an optimum angle. This horizontal component of the placement is known as the range. Next, we move to law of motion. How do the law of motion apply to basketball? Law of inertia, which is the first law of motion, states that an object at rest tends to stay at rest, while an object in motion tends to stay in motion unless an external force acts upon it. If no forces, the ball will continue to travel in its current direction. For example, the force in basketball is the gravity that acts upon the ball to put it down to the earth. The solution, the athlete must judge the force of gravity by the weight of the ball to find the right line of trajectory so the ball acts into the basket. A also resists the ball in the form of drag. F equal to Me is a Newton's second law. Acceleration is produced when the force acts on a mass. The equation is expressed as force equal to mass time acceleration. The basketball has mass. The player should use the appropriate amount of force when shooting or passing the ball. Action ratio, which is the Newton third law. Every force has an equal reaction force in the opposite direction. For example, the player takes a strike, they put force on the floor. This is because the floor has too much mass for athlete to move it. The force travels back to the athlete and propels him forward. The forces from the floor called ground reaction and it allows the athlete to jump. Action reaction is what allows the athlete to make their way up and down. Next, we move to the example question. So as we can see here, there are two players, the one at position A who is throwing the ball to the basket and the one at position B who is trying to block him. So the question asks to determine the initial velocity and also the height of the ball when it passes the player B. There are some information given, which is 
The horizontal distance from A to B is 25 feet and also from B to C is 5 feet and the height from the ground to the sea is 10 feet. The height from the ground to point A is 7 feet and the angle here is 30 degree. So as we all know that kinematics has three equations as written here but since for the horizontal motion the acceleration is equal to zero so it only yields this equation if we substitute the acceleration into this equation and this equation it will give the same answer which is the final velocity is equal to the initial velocity because this part will give zero and this also will give zero as for vertical motion since the positive y axis is directed upward so the acceleration is equal to negative g which is equal to negative 9.81 so this will give us three equations as stated here so let's start at point c first which is from a to c since there is one equation left for horizontal motion so we substitute the information given here to this equation and it will give us the initial velocity which is equal to 34.64 per t and then we use the same equation for the vertical motion and also substitute the information given to this equation and we will get the second equation. And then substitute the V that we get from equation 1 to the equation 2 and we will get T equal to 1.709 second. And then the time that we get here, we substitute it back to the equation 1 and it will give us V equal to 20.27 feet per second. Feet per second. Since we want to know the height of the ball that passes over the player B, we need to use the information given that only from point A to point B. We use the same equation as before for horizontal motion and also the vertical motion. We substitute the information given that only from point A to point B to this equation and we will get t equal to 1.425 second and then we substitute the t that we get here to this vertical equation and we will get h equal to 11.484 feet so this is the final answer hi thank you a very good day at this all i'm Tina Hadira and i'm going to present on dynamics which is kinetics so let's see what is kinetics so kinetics is a branch of mechanics that concerns relationship with motion, everything that moves. So it focuses on causes of different motion, such as rotational motion, force, or torques. So the adjustable form kinetics persists in mechanics in the terms of kinetic friction and kinetic energy. So now let's see what is kinetic energy. So kinetic energy, Ke, of an object is energy that possesses due to its motion is defined as the work needed to accelerate a body given mass from rest to stated velocity. So this kind of motion may be translation, rotation, vibration or any combination of these motions. So total kinetic energy of a body or a system is equal to sum of the kinetic energies of each type of motion. So let's see the equations of from kinetic. So here is kinetic energy K. K equals to 1 over 2 m v squared. So m is mass in kilogram, v is velocity in meter per second. There are also other equations that we can use for kinetic, like displacement, velocity, acceleration, time, force or torque, as I have mentioned before, momentum and e, the kinetic energy. Now, let us see an example that we can use with this kinetic energy equation. Next, we will be looking at the real-life examples of kinetics of the particle. One real-life example of kinetics in particle is toaster. When we want to toast a bread, firstly, we slide one slice of bread into each toaster slot. Then, we set the level of toasting. We then pull the lever down to start the toasting cycle. When we pull this lever down, the bread is pulled downward in between the heating elements that is inside the toaster. The spring at each end of the toaster is extended. When the bread is ready, the spring is released and the bread pops up. The question is, 
how much force do we need to apply to the level to make sure that when the bread is ready, it pops up but does not get thrown out of the toaster by neglecting the weight of the mechanism and assuming there are no losses in it. The typical one slice of bread has a length and width of 0.1 m and mass of 30 gram. In order for the bread to not get thrown out of the toaster when the bread is ready, the bread must not jump higher than the depth of the toast slot which is approximately the same to the length of the bread. The top jump, the final vertical velocity is equal to zero. So by using this equation, we can calculate the initial vertical velocity. And the initial vertical velocity here is 1.4 meter per second. Next, we can calculate the kinetic energy gained by each slice of the bread from the spring at launch by using this formula. And we get the kinetic energy is equal to 0 0.0294 joule. Kinetic energy we calculate earlier is equals to the work done on the spring of the toaster and it's equals to 1 over 2 multiplied by the force and the distance traveled by the level of the toaster. In the resting position, the bread is within two thirds of the toaster, so the distance that the level needs to travel is 0 0.0667 meters. And now we can calculate the force that needs to be applied, which is 0 0.882 newton. So the force that we need to apply to the level to make sure that the bread does not get thrown out of the toaster when it is ready is 0 0.882 newton.